Welcome to the recap show on the Baseball Awakening Podcast with Jeff Rodmeyer. Today, we will discuss the lessons learned and the action items from yesterday's interview. Hey guys, Jeff Rodmeyer here. This is the Baseball Awakening Recap Show, where I share with you the biggest takeaways I got from my conversation with John Kazanis, as well as how I plan to implement what I've learned with my players that train with me at my academy in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Now, before I get started, as I always say, I want to hear from you guys because different things mean different things to different people. So it would be interesting to see how you guys interpreted something that Mr. John Kazana said the last couple of days or something that I'm going to say today. I'll make a show where I read off these emails because we can all learn something from it. So my email is going to be Jeff, G-E-O, ff at baseballawakening.com so send me your thoughts your comments or your feedback okay so what do scouts and college coaches look for it's always the question that get asked and even when they hear the answer to the question that i ask some coaches or in this case mr john kazanis there's still a lack of understanding so what we have to realize first is it doesn't matter how good we think we are. The only thing that matters is how good they think you are. And it only takes one person, one person to see you and believe in you. And believe me, a lot of people are going to have different opinions about you and your skill set. But understand, you're looking for that one person. I'll just find that one person. Do not get, your, do not get emotionally involved in someone's opinion. We got to get that one person to see you and believe in you. Okay, that's the first thing first. So throughout the conversation with John, he kept saying that what scouts are looking for is players that they feel can make it to the big leagues and help their organization win games. He alluded to that a handful of times throughout this conversation. And he also said that the odds of every player that they turn in and every player that they sign, making it to the big league, it's very small. But they're looking at a kid and see if he had the skill set that's going to translate. So what are some of the things that can help a guy understand what they are seeing? So let's just say for, for a hitter, they want to see you consistently get the barrel to the baseball and hit it hard regardless of whether it produces outs or not. You know, you're showing your ability to get the barrel to the baseball. It's going to be important. Another part would be, you know, if you're going to swing the bat in the strike zone, you can't miss. You know, I see a lot of guys swinging and missing at balls in the strike zone. The the guys that these guys are looking for are not missing those pitches. Another thing would be, you know, having an approach and a plan at the plate, understanding what they're doing. So, Understand that when, when John's out there looking at guys, it's not just about the staff. It's not about going two for three in games. It's about whether you can get the barrel to the ball, about hitting, about hitting it hard. It's about you know being able to hit balls in the strike zone and not missing it. And, and understanding what you're doing at the plate. So there's a lot of pieces to it. You know, A lot of things that we perceive as negative in the game are actually some of the things that they see as positive. So you got to you got to shift the perspective and understand what they're looking for, because it'll help you, especially emotionally, when it not get so caught up in in some of the results. And we, and I went on to ask him what projecting means, because that's what they do. The scouts are projecting. They're projecting what a kid might be in the future. And, and basically, he said, you know. You have a kid who has the ability, you know, everything that I explained a little bit earlier, putting the ball, put the barrel on the baseball, having a plan, having an approach, swinging that strike and, and hitting him, you know, all those things. But let's just say the ball that he's barreling up are not carrying as far. Or let's just say in the case of pitching, you know, he's like John's example, he's falling off and instead of going directly to the pitch. 
you know, little tweaks that can make a big difference or maybe even a weight program that can help a kid get stronger and put more power behind the swing or more power behind the arm. You know, the different, different small tweaks that can make a difference in performance. You know, and, and that's something that, you know, they're looking at. They're looking at who proje- who who can project, who can grow into their frame. You know, let's say a guy had a more mature frame. You know, at the younger age, it seems like those guys get a lot of the a lot of the attention. You know, and but what happens is sometimes if you if you mature too fast, it, in their eye, they're wondering whether you still have room for growth. Now, that doesn't mean that they're not looking at them. Again, it all takes one person to see you and believe in you. But if you are, if you don't show room for growth, then that's not something that's favorable. They're looking for a guy that says, if I can put this kid in the weight room and he can take the barrel, that, the ball that he's hitting now and, and, and getting some more carry on him, or if I take this kid and tweak his mechanics a little bit, he can throw a little bit harder. Uh, those are the things that they're looking at. Those are the things that are projectable. So, when you're going to hear that word a lot with 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 them, we're we're trying to project what a kid will be, and that's basically what he's talking about. It does he have room to grow, in terms of the weight room, in terms of growth, you know, in terms of you know mechanic tweaks, you know, developing an approach, routine, all that stuff. Does he have room to grow, and, and you know, it, there's something there, and then this carried into asking about his thoughts and feelings on the analytics. And he basically said that, you know, that's part of the game and you need to get on board with it. So he says it basically quantifies a lot more of a lot of things that they were looking at already, you know. And now the analytics are changing the approach of guys. So a lot of guys are maybe not being the hitter that they need to be or the pitcher that they need to be because – they're 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 approaching it from an analytical based you know approach rather than you know understanding who they are what they're doing and, and having an approach that's designed for them so the the analytics is changing some of the guys approach but it's not changing the way the scouts are looking at guys it, if anything it, it's more quantifying what they're doing so they're gonna they're gonna look at these numbers. They're gonna take them and they're gonna follow progress. You know, I think the biggest thing is, is making sure that you can repeat your mechanics, make sure that you can make consistent contact, uh, make sure you can get guys out. So you know, the analytics and, and achieving numbers matter, but being able to go out there, compete, and contribute matters as well. And so, so I asked John to tell me a little bit about you know, what he's looking at with, with hitters. And he said if a guy had quick hands, good hand-eye coordination, guy has a plan at the plate, can handle adversity, understands himself, can make adjustments, you know, all the things that we said earlier, you know, just being able to swing and not miss the ball in the zone, you know, a guy who has confidence, you know, all these things kind of kind of come together. There's more to it, again, as I've said before and earlier, that there's more to it than just the mechanics. There's more to it than just the result. There's a lot of pieces to it. And he also said that confidence is a huge part, you know, and the, the scouts and coaches that watch enough players can scout confidence. They can seek that out immediately. They can see guys who don't have confidence immediately. So, Understand that you gotta, you understand that they can, they can scout confidence. So yeah, you know, all the way up to this point, man, I'm enjoying this conversation because he's sharing a lot of great stuff. So, but then I went on to ask him is, you know, talk a little bit about the saying behind, if you're good, they'll find you. You know, it's, it, it's an interesting conversation because a lot of kids think they're better than they really are. And this is where needing the honest evaluation and and honest feedback comes into play. Because in a world full of people who are pretty good at the game of baseball, 
the world and the world is just bigger than your town and your district. And if you're the best in your town and your district, that's great. But how do you compare to someone across the country or even across the world? So when you start thinking of it this way, it's crazy to kind of think, you know, how good you might have to be. You know, these scouts watch players for a living. So they're pretty good at seeing who can play and who can't play. So if they're not showing up at your games and not asking your coaches about you, then you might not be on their radar. You know, and as John said, you know, if I saw a big leaguer, would I walk away from him? You know, so so that's where, you know, this is where the honest feedback comes in. You need to find someone that can be honest with you on the feedback. You know, and, and, and he also talked about how those guys, you know, that the they make the game. The guys who are, if you're good, they'll find you. If you watch the games on TV, they how effortless the plays look, how easy the game looks to them. He goes, you're going to see those guys that, like that at the guys that they're watching, the guys making the game, the guys who are good enough that they'll find you, they they just have a way about their game that just looks so easy and effortless. You know, they have the fluidity of movement. They have the vision and the decision-making ability to make great jump and make great decisions on the field. You know, and I think this is where, you know, putting in the extra work, you know, being consistent in all the areas in the fielding or hitting or pitching, you know, whatever it may be, there's a lot more to it than just being able to throw the ball, feel the ball, and, and catch the ball. And this is where you need to get some opinion. You need to get someone who understands all this and, and help you develop a plan to be able to develop other areas of the game. Now, I do think that you got to get the foundation right. The foundation takes time to build. You got to get that right. And then once you can build that, then you need to start expanding what you can do. And, and, at, and at this point in the conversation, I'm carrying it over to asking him about the kid that hits 500 in high school and not getting attention. You know, there's a lot of that cases out there. And, and again, you know, it's all about having the right skill set and competing against the right talent. You know, though being, you know, this is where you got to focus more on, on the skill development over just trying to get numbers or just trying to go to as many events as you can. You know, John said, John Kazana, he said that the guy that goes 0 for 3 with three hard line drives that were caught, it's better than the guy that hit two duck farts for a hit. So maybe the box score looks good, but in terms of the what the scouts are looking for, they like the guy that went over three that hit three hard line drives. So it's very interesting when you start looking at what they are looking at compared to what we perceive as negative and bad. But you got to change that, that that approach, and it, it helps when the coaches will do that. It helps when the coaches will help you understand what's good and what's not, you know, and, and instead of just being so result-driven all the time. And this led me into asking about about failure. You know, actually, he started talking about failure. He goes, I love to see kids fail. Because he said, you have to learn to fail before you can learn to succeed. And I love that because it's true. You know, you have to be able to handle adversity. And it's important how you respond to it and how you make adjustments. You know, making adjustments is the big part. So you got to put the emotions away and figure out what your plan is to make the adjustment to help your to, 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 to go out there and compete and to contribute in helping your team out. You know, kids are not they're not perfect. They're gonna make mistakes and they're gonna get emotional at times. But the key is learning from it. And and more importantly, not letting it carry over to the next play or the next at bat. You know, you hear these conversations all the time about the kid that struck out in the first at bat and he's done for the entire game. Or the kid that makes an error in, in his first inning and he's done for the entire game. We can't have that. And, and these guys need to understand that. Some of these kids are, are pretty emotional and that's fine. You know, but you need to, you need to teach them and, under, and help them understand that this is going to have a domino effect. You got to be able to play the game one pitch at a time. One, just one pitch at a time and, and have short term memory. Because the thing you have to remember is 
the people that matter in the game, so that's the the coaches, college coaches, the scout, they understand the game. They understand whether you sacrifice yourself to put your team in a position to win. They understand that the hard line drive that you hit that got caught was out of your control. They understand the short shortstop that made the air while you were pitching isn't your fault. They know these things, so you can't be selfish and not do the things that are going to help your team win games. You know, so that ground ball to second base that scored the runner on third is a positive thing. You know, again, and the people that that matter understand this. It's not, you know, oh, shoot, now I'm over two for the day. It's about doing the things that will help your team win. This shows the scouts that you understand the situation. You understand the game. And you took an approach to help yourself help your team. And then from there, I asked him about, you know, the the max effort throws and the max effort hitting that seemed to be kind of talked about these days. And he he talked about how the game had changed in 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 that in that regard. And believe me, I love a guy that throws hard and a guy that hits hard. But I think if you use your body efficiently, they will produce those results. You know, there needs to be some balance and approach for the hitting and throwing. You know, I want guys to swing the bat hard, but I want it to come from efficient body movement instead of muscling everything up and making the body overwork. So it's interesting, you know, time will tell. And and again, just to repeat, I'm not against swinging hard and throwing hard. I just believe that the body can do more and be more efficient in producing those type of results. And then that kind of got us to the end of the conversation where I asked John, what's his recommendation on helping a guy who listening to this that wants to be a scout? So my, my, you know, basically I would just say go back and listen to part two of the conversation. The very last part, he shared some great, some great insight on what he would do if, if he would, you know, to start all over and, and wanted to get into scouting. So a great, a great conversation, a lot of nuggets. And, and the biggest takeaway, you know, for me is you have to be honest with the kid. You don't want to kill his dream. You know, and it's tough to say to a kid that works hard. You know, it's it's tough to tell him as a freshman or sophomore that he can't play D1 because you just don't know. You know, I've seen a lot of kids that work hard that end up going to D1 later on in the, later on in their development. You know, they weren't on the radar, but you got to have an honest conversation about what it's going to take to play at the college and professional range because a lot of kids just don't realize what it takes to play. They think, you know, just going out there and doing their thing is going to do their thing, but they don't realize the sacrifices and the understanding of what skills they need to develop to be able to play there. So the honest evaluation, the honest conversation is, is, is key, but you got to make sure you don't kill a kid's dream while you're doing that. So it, it's a tough conversation, and um, but I think I would lead more toward just telling them what it's going to take Versus, well, you're not going to play D1 because you're, you're a small guy and don't hit the ball hard because that's not true. A lot of, a lot of things can happen and it will come together and a kid might be able to be able to go play D1 in pro ball if, if they stick to it. So that's going to be my takeaway. Thanks for tuning in. You know, I want to hear from you guys. So let me know if you got anything. Um, again, Jeff, G-E-O-F-F at baseballawakening.com. Thank you.